Okay, so um, what is regularization and how, when do we regularize? So regularization actually comes in and the, when there is a problem of overfitting in the model, if the model overfits. Can, I, can someone remind me what overfitting means? Overfitting when the is model is too complex. Too complex? So how do you know it's too complex? If the, um, the training set is, is, um, is lower than the training um, test sets. Okay, so Dimeji, can you correct? If the accuracy on the training set is higher than the accuracy on the test set. Yes, if the accuracy, if the performance, sometimes it may not be accuracy, but for this case, we have been using accuracy as the metric. But if the performance of the model on the training set, you know what I mean training set? Training set means training data. So set there means data. So I'm sure you remember, you can't say if the training data is more, no. If the accuracy, the performance on the training data is, is higher uh, than that of the uh, accuracy on the test data. That is if the model performs very well on the training data, but worse on the on the test, on the or the test or the validation, we say that model overfits. So that's what overfitting means. So, so and like Vera said, overfitting means the model is too complex for that data. So that means that model memorizes all of the patterns in the training data, including what is not necessary that I call the noise, including what is not necessary. And like we use example, we use uh, layman understanding to explain in uh, language to explain last, like you, you read all of what is in your notes, including what the professor or the lecturer will not ask in the, in, the, in the question. However, when the lecturer brings similar question that is on that same topic, but not what is in your notes, but because the understanding was not really, really there, you only know what is in the node, not what is uh, similar to it, but not in the node, you perform worse on that core test. So meaning that the model understand the training data so well, even memorizing, even understand what uh, memorizes the noise, what is not necessary. But when you're passing a new and unseen data to read, Similar with similar information to what to the pre, to the model that was used to build it to the training data, it performed worse on that one. That's overfitting. So that means that model is not flexible enough to understand the patterns in new data similar to it. It only but it's too complex for the training data that was used to build it. Do you all understand? Yes, sir. So that's where over so and so the question of what how can we solve it there are basically two ways if it is possible get more data because you said the model is too complex for the data so maybe if we can get more data maybe that should work in the real sense from the standpoint of statistician or from statistics you should get more data but in the real world, my friends, getting data is very, very expensive. It's a complex stuff. Because getting data, remember you are talking of, the data may involve from human beings now. Like you are now going to be investing, like going out, it could be to, to, to meet people one by one because each row could represent an observation, a record about someone. For instance, in the hospital, you are, you are talking of data from patients. So that means you want to get data from patients. Each row represents a record about a patient. So that way, if the data may be very expensive, but suppose it's not, you can get it. The best option will be to get more data. So that if your data is large enough, most times is 
training model on a very small data that leads to overfitting, small data. So increasing the data, if the data is large, the model re rarely overfits. It rarely overfits. Now, suppose getting data is very, is not an option for you. Like it's very, very difficult to do. The other option is what we call regularization. So can you give me a few minutes? Uh, I'll come back, I will, I will uh, just just few minutes and I will be back to, to explain it, okay? So we all understood why we may want to use regularization, right? Why do we, why may we use regularization? Wow. Anybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, if the model overfits. If the model overfits. Uh, if you are, if there is no stem, you are honestly trying to mute. Hello. Okay. So, and then remember there are two ways from which you can uh, you can solve this. What are the two ways if the model overfits? Either we get more data or we regularize. Exactly. Okay, that's true. So we said uh, getting more data or regularize. So now we want to look at regularize. So to regularize, now, it will come from, why did the model overfit? Fine, we said the model was too complex. Why was the model too complex? What does it really mean, breaking it down? Do you remember the equation for the linear regression that I showed you, which you would also, you, you would also have seen in your school? Like y at equals to uh, uh, W1, X1 plus W2, X2 up to WN, XN. Do you remember that equation? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you remember what I said those X's are? Yes, sir. What yes, are sir, the their weights? The X's, those X. What does the, what does the X represent? Do you remember? Independent variable, sir. Yeah, those are the variables in your data, like the average number of bedrooms, average number of rooms, average area income, those are the X's, okay? But the, the W's are the weights, the coefficient, the coefficient that, but that coefficient is the model that comes up with it, is not you. And that's what, that's what the learning means. The model is trying to learn, to come up with appropriate values for those coefficients. The more the model comes up, the more accurately the model comes up with uh, those co coefficients, the better the performance of your model. So what makes the model, this model overfit? It means is that the model came up with some coefficients that are very high and some low. So those ones that are high, they are dominating the model. So regularization means find a way to reduce those coefficients that are high that are dominating the model. So regularization means reducing or restricting the coefficient of variables dominating the model, reducing them to values closer to zero. I don't know if that English I'm using is clear. Yes, it's very clear, sir. Yeah. It's clear, sir. So that's what regulation means. Reducing those, those, very, those coefficients, those Ws, with values that those coefficients that have high values, those W reducing them closer to zero. The, the intuition is that since each variable has a coefficient, you know, that's why you have W1, X1. The X is the variable, but it has a coefficient W1. So the, the intuition is that uh, since each variable has a coefficient attached to it, if I can reduce that coefficient, it's, not, it's just like saying 
let's say the X1 has a value of 1,000 hmm? and W1 is one. Another variable has a value, so one times 1,000, remember it's W1, X1, there's a product there. One times 1,000 is 1,000, right? Maybe I should yes, sir, yes, this. Uh, okay, so you have a variable here, x1, you have x2. This one has a coefficient with w1, and then we say we are doing multiply, uh, we are multiplying, and then we are adding it to another one, w2, x2, something like that. Now, this, this guy, is let's say it has a value. Let's say this one stands for average number of rooms. So this this is like five. This is average number of income uh, or average population or whichever one. Average number of bedrooms. Let this one be average number of bedrooms. This one average number of rooms. So this one is average number of bedroom. Maybe is three. Now this one has a coefficient of twenty. Okay, so remember it's going to multiply them. This one has a coefficient of two. You know, the result of this guy will be 10, right? The result of this guy will be 60. Which one will impact the model more? This variable or this variable? Variable X2. Variable X2, because the coefficient is high compared to two. So regularization means Reduce this guy, this 20, to values closer to zero. So let's say this guy now becomes the next. So the model, I mean, I'm teaching you neural networks, deep learning. And I mean, you understand this very well. That's what the model is trying to do. But in, in machine learning, which we call shallow models, uh, the, uh, the, the effect, what regulation we now do is what deep learning does without people knowing what is doing under the hood. So now, but let's forget about deep learning and all of that. Let's just focus on this one. Uh, my mouse is hanging, why? So uh, let me see. Maybe you have locked it. Uh, no, not really. There's a lock for mouse on the trackpad. Like a laser light like this. You can tap it three times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay. So now, um, so what did, so if the model, let's regularization now say, let's reduce this coefficient instead of 20 to value close to zero, let's say 0 0.5. Let's, let's make it 0 0.5. So you know now we're doing 0 0.5 times three, right? And that gives yes, us what? 1.5. You can see that this now, the impact of this variable on the model will be reduced. So that's what it's doing. It's reducing high impact coefficient or I impact variable. By variable, we are referring to its coefficient. So that way is going to reduce the complexity of that model, trying to reduce the model from being comp too complex. That's what regularization is doing. Is it clear? Very clear, sir. Oh, okay, good. Yes, sir. All yes, right. sir. So, Okay, so now um, that is what, so, but the unfortunate thing is that in linear regression, uh, compared to other models, linear regression does not have a, an inbuilt parameter to, to do the regularization. Models like logistic regression has, and we're going to see that today, but models like linear regression does not have. So that was what, the, what bet the creation of rich regression and lasso regression that we're going to look at. So rich regression and lasso 
I will explain both now. They are very simple to understand. They are also linear regression, but they are used to regularize the a linear regression using a distance function. I will not go too deep because not everybody is a mathematician here. For those of you who are, I don't know, I don't know how mathematics is in the, is it in the school now, but for, I'm not sure if Vera will understand it. I, I know at some point you might have forgotten, you were taught something called norm, L1 norm, L2 norm, under vectors, you were taught something like that. I don't know if you remember. Uh, but you were taught something like that, norm. That norm stands for distance. And so there are two types of them. We have L1 and L2. I'm not going to go into the formulas and all of that, okay? So as not to bore you. You know, I told you this, but machine is about statistics and mathematics, actually. You're only using a programming language to teach it, to implement it, okay? So that, that distance is what Rich and Lasso are using. Rich uses a distance function called L2 norm. That L2, um, I mean, it just takes the square of the distance. So the distance is used to regularize those I impact coefficient. So the idea with Rich, if you look at this as uh, this diagram, look at the, the one at the left. This was the original model. And look at the one at the right. You see that. At the middle, the center, let's that's the that's the zero where the that's the zero coefficient where y is zero. Let's say that's where y is zero, this green straight line. So Ridge is trying to shrink all of the or to reduce all of the coefficients to values closer to zero. That's why you see that they are you know, just close to this center line. It's trying to reduce those coefficient that are dominating the model, that are making the model complex, is trying to reduce them to values close to zero. Meaning, the more I can shrink them closer to zero, the lesser the impact they will have on the model. I, I'm not sure if I'm able to explain it well. Yes, it's making sense now. Good. So the closer those coefficients are to zero, the lesser the impact the variable that holds that coefficient will have on the model. That's what Ridge is doing. But it's using a distance function called L2. You don't need to know that. Just know, in case someone beside you is saying, you know, some people like to show the, their knowledge by using some terminologies. So in case you just on that, oh, okay, I, I, I've heard it before. Now, but what, what about lasso? There is a tiny difference between the two. They are doing the same job. But instead of, you know, read we shrink those coefficients of that, those variables to close to zero, but lasso we turn them to exactly zero. Do you, do you know the, if, you, if the question are turned to zero, do you know what that means? Anybody? Yes, that means, that means the independent variable has no impact at all. Exactly. The, the variables will not even be used to build the model because it's zero. It's zero. That's what this is doing. This guy is doing. It sell little impact features to zero. It turns it to exactly zero. That's what the blue line you are seeing. It turns it to zero. That's why the blue, you can see the legend. Lasso, that's the blue. So it turns it to exactly zero. That's why the line is picked at zero. It turns little impact features, like features that dominate the model, but they don't really have meaning. They don't really have more. They, they, can, they don't really help us to predict the target. We just turn them to zero. That's it. So, so many people use the, the lasso regression as a form of feature selection, like to just select, meaning that lasso only select variables that are meaningful. Every other one set them to zero. So people, some people, people normally say lasso regression is a form of feature selection, meaning it selects only meaningful features. The rest will be turned to zero. But, but it could be harsh sometimes. You know, it's harsh now. It's just like saying, okay, you are one, 100 in the class. And I look at it that 
maybe the most serious ones and those who are really doing well and they are very serious presently, they are just 10. I just say, okay, the remaining 90, I don't want them in my class again. You know, that, that's, that's, that's interesting, but that could be harsh because tomorrow those, those unserious ones could turn out to be serious. <laughs> so, but that's, that's in a lay way, that's in a layman way, that's what Lasso is doing. He just select the meaningful variables and set the remaining ones to zero. Any question? Very clear, sir. Okay, good. So let's see how to implement this in, in Python or scikit-learn. Let's see how to implement. Oh, I stopped sharing. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. So let's 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 uh, see how to implement that. So implementing this, uh, Vera, watch out for how we're going to drop the variables that we are not need, we don't need. Okay. Just the same the same step the same step for mostly all the models you'll be building even in the nearest future, in the future, but the models is what differs. Understanding what each model does is what makes the difference between you and many people out there. A lot of people just, you know, uh, say, oh, machine learning, machine learning, I know it. Oh, okay, I know about this model. I, I can build 10 different models, but a lot of people don't know what each model is doing, how they work. That's the difference. You need to know it. And I will not, I don't think we will, I will ever be, uh, build anyone to not understand what each model is doing under the hood. Because if you don't know, you will not be able to interpret the results you are getting or how to improve the performance of the model. You will know. You will know. You may be able to build the model copying people code on the internet but you may not be able to improve it or to explain what those parameters that improve the model is doing. You will know that's it. So that's why you need to read and you know understand what this model is doing. Okay. So let's start from the basis. Uh, the first thing you all you always need to start from the data. Okay. So get the data. Okay. So uh, import pandas. Speedy, I want to believe I have it in the, uh, in the URL. I think I have it in the data called USA Housing. Okay, good. So I have the, let me call it USA. I have the PD dot. What do I use to, what am I going to use to read it? This is a form of refresher now. You should shine now. Read underscore CSV. Exactly. So the image is shining now. So passing the URL there, okay. So uh, I mean, let's let's just let's just check what is there. You know, USA dot ed. Uh, okay. So this is what you have. You already know it. I'm not going to explore it. I'm not going to do all of that. You have done that. Do it. Check if that's missing values. But it doesn't have visualize like the major has done and ask many questions explain your reasoning and all of that do all of that you are at liberty to do all you want but i'm ready to build a model okay so to do that i notice that the address here is are not meaningful like they have letters and all of that so if i want to deal with that one if i want to include it i will have to uh I will have to do a lot of pre-processes or need processes separately, add it back to my data frame, do all of that, convert it to numbers, but that is beyond the scope of this course. If you want to know it in the future, if you get a job, you get a job, especially for those of you, or even those of you who are still in school or those of you who are outside and you are struggling with it, reach out to me. I will, without collecting a dime from you, I said you are earning millions. I will charge you for consultation. Otherwise, you are my friend. I will, I will answer you. And we can hold Zoom. We can do all of that. That's the goal. That's the joy. Dimeji, your question. Okay, so my question is that what if the address 
does not carry the full address like it just carries something like a landmark yeah, good, okay. that some of them are even reoccurring i think that would have yeah, had added, added impact in the, in the feature selection kind of like open it into three Okay, so before I answer you, uh, Dimeji, the noise is from you, all right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the noise is from you, sir. Sorry, sir. Oh, okay, no, 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 it's fine. I just want to know. Okay, well, the point is, it's not even because it has letters, so many things that we're dropping it. The point is, if, does that variable add meaning? Does it help us to predict? the housing price if it is yes that means we will include it in the data and to include it if it has some text we need to find a way to convert the text to numbers there are diverse ways and that is in text analytics or natural language processing have you heard about nlp before no but I yes, know sir. we can encode it. Oh, okay. So for those of you who have had it, that's the... Okay, I think you're asking a different question. Well, that's the word of NLP. But you are asking of... You ask, You mentioned a word now that made, me, made that statement. You said encode. So can you repeat your question again? So my question is that... Um, you can see this address, like all of mm -hmm. them, they're carrying full address. Yeah, and yeah. Uh -huh. There is no, there is, there is no one that is repetitive. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, what if they they have something like landmark only, maybe, uh, and some of them are reoccurring. Okay. So maybe you have, let's say, we just have uh, address Lagos, address yes. um, Abuja, address, yes. right? Oh, that's yes, yes. So that we no that we now we term that a categorical variable because we can say the categories are the, the maybe there are maybe there are four states there Lagos, Abuja, Port Harcourt, and the, um, let's say you know uh, um, maybe Ekiti or Undo, whichever one. So that becomes we can treat that as a categorical variable, and there is a way to do that in in pandas. You can go and investigate pd.get dummies. Yes. Okay? Yes. pd.get dummies will do that for you. So if you're passing the data, even without specifying that column name, it will create a dummy for those. And then we can even do maybe, maybe for this question you ask, may, you remind me if you don't still know how to do that. Maybe I will introduce a single, a particular data that has, okay, in your project, good. In your project that you're going to do, because I'm going to open the project today. And next week, you are going to start showing me <laughs> what you have done. All your effort throughout the week should be on the project. So on that project, there are categorical variables there that you will need to convert to numeric variables. So use pd.getdomies. Check on Google how to do it. If not, don't wait till next week before you ask me. Send me an email. Oh, okay, sir. And I will reply the email. But you can, you, there are a lot. Just check Google, there are a lot of. So, so but check pd.get dummies, passing the data, and then it's going to create the dummies for you. But make sure as you do it, Vera will answer your question pd.get dummies. Make sure as you do it, there is a variable I want you to set inside. Once you pass in the data name, specify a variable called drop first and specify it to be true. I will explain what that means if you, if by the time you are displaying your, what you have done so far for me next week. So you will use that. Yeah, Vera, your question. Um, no, I just wanted to ask that the get dummies, is it like D-U-M-M-I-E-S, the dummies? Exactly. You don't need to okay. memorize it. Do PD dot and press tab. If okay. you get, you see, it gives you. It did not get dummies. And if you do shift tab, it tells you the variable that should be there. So this is the variable I said you should specify it. Specify it to be true. It's going to drop the first category of that variable. But don't worry, all these are still abstract, abstract, uh, I mean abstract terms until you are doing it. So I will explain it if you come across it and you don't understand. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. 
So Dimeji, do I answer your question? Yes, sir, you answered it, sir. Okay, Thank good. you, sir. All right. So, um, so now I, I don't need the address last for now. I don't need it. So I need to remove it. Then, um, so let's, the first step, let's, let's uh, remove or select, select the, remember the four steps to build your model, select the, the variables, the features and the what? The target, right? So we have the features. I, I'm, am I to, are we together? Yes, we are together, sir. So USA, no, so we, we want to drop. So in this case, now we'll drop two columns, the price and the address, because I don't need the address, but the price is the target and you don't want to include the target in the features. If you include it, it will not throw error. However, you've introduced a bias into the model because this, price, if you put it as the features, that will inform your model about the price of the house there. So your model will be giving you, it can give 100%, even on the training, but on the test, even on the test, it can give you, for this particular data it will give. But if we give you fresh new data that hasn't seen before, it will perform woefully. So, bet, so we don't always want to put the target as part of the features. That would be a costly mistake because you don't want to give it expo. It's just like you have exam. To, uh, you have exam on Monday and you, we gave you the expo today. Remember, you, you know you score 100% <laughs> if they bring the exact same question. If you don't, if you do not forget, oh, there are some people that they will say forget. If they until they bring, take the expo inside the hall, <laughs> so suppose you do not forget you 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 can get hundred percent right, but does that mean you understand those the 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 cost? No, right, so. no. So that's it. So you don't want to include the target, okay? So let's drop. Since I'm dropping two variables, I'll put them in a list, okay? Remember you did uh, list price and then address. Remember, what do I need to set here? You guys that did the assignment now, that did the exercise, what do you set when you drop? In place equals to. Nope. Axis equals Axis one. Axis equals one. Axis equals one. So that means, because by default, the axis is zero, meaning drop the rows, but these are not rows, they are columns. So you have to set the axis to one. Don't set in, in place equals to true. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter here because we are assigning it to a different variable called features. So you don't need to set in place to true. Okay. So target. Uh, so Vera, do you see how to drop now? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, good. So target will select, which variable are we going to select for target? Price. Price. Price, good. Okay, remember I said you can convert this to NumPy array. What do I What do I do? What do I include here to convert it to NumPy array? Dot Any values. Dot values, you guys are very smart. In fact, I'm enjoying you guys. <laughs> okay, so let me, let's, let's create more cell here. So let's run it. And you can check it a little bit because it's now array. You cannot use dot edge. So you have to index it like you normally index a list. Let me just put maybe two, just first two rows of. So the first value represent the first column. First value in the first column you can see, but you convert it to an array form, okay? And then your target and all of that. So. The next thing, what is the next thing? For those of you who have done the, who, who did the exercise, what's the next thing in building a model? Don't sleep off, oh. Hello? Uh, we need to split it, sir. Split it's the data. Our test, sir. God bless you. Yes, split the data. Okay, it's let's say we're using, uh, Dimeji, what's your question? 
Sorry, sorry. Is it compose we we converted to a non pi array? It's because not, I didn't do that like that. It's not a If you don't, it will still work. Yeah, the reason works. you convert it to non pi array is because if you are dealing with a very large data, like if this data is about 200 million rows, you know, that's a large data. Yes. So it, it's not like it will not still work, but it will be fast. NumPy array was created, it's very similar to list, but it was created to, to, to make, uh, for memory efficient, for the memory of your computer. That's what oh. NumPy was created for. So okay. if you do dot values, it converts to NumPy. So it will make, by the time the model is building the, the, uh, the algorithm is building the model, if the values are in an array form, is going to reduce the amount of memory in your computer that is going to consume. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, but you don't have to. If you if you if you know your, I mean, you don't have to. So, okay. So we could you said we need to split the data into training and test cell. What function? The import we from SQLite the model selection. We import with test data. Okay, this guy is all good. So from, he said from SKLN, uh, do put that and press this model selection uh, from, oh, my from is wrong. From SKLN model selection, you can see I just press tab for auto completion. Import, press tab, train, train test splits. Okay, so the next thing, we want to split the data into X train. In your own um, project, you are going to be using three sets. Did I show you how to create three sets? No, sir. I want to see that now. Don't show that. Okay, I will do that now, but I will not use it. I will still use the two set, but I will just show you. Okay. So let me call this guy because I want to use three set. Let me call this guy X train val. And then I have my X, X test, Y train val, Y test. So we have the train test split. So I, I will pass in the features. The features, I want to split these features into X train val and X test. And I want to split the targets into Y train val and Y test. Now, by default, this uses 75% for the training, 25% for the testing. Okay? But you can you can change it. If you want to override it, I can set the test size to be 0 0.3, meaning 30% for testing, 70% for training. But let's use the default, okay? But you can, I've showed you. And then random size, a uh, random state, sorry. Do you remember what random state is doing? Yes, it yes, makes sir. the model yes. to always pick the same set of value. Exactly, for reproducibility. Okay, so if I want three sets, I will just do another splitting. All I'm going to do, I'm going to now split this extreme val into two again, into the training and the validation, that's all. But I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to show you. So X train now, X val, Y train, Y val. That's why I call the other, the first one X train val, meaning I'm still going to split it to two. So now I'm doing train test split. Instead of features now, what will I pass in? X train val. Exactly, X train val, because that's what I want to split. And then my my target will now be Y. Y train Y, y train Val. You guys are smart. Then we can also set the random state to be zero. But I will not use it. I will just use, I will be using this one now as my X train because I, I don't want to use three sets because the data is small. Okay. So for uh in the real world when data is small. Go on, go on, uh, investigate, go and read about cross validation. I will not teach it. 
but if you want to, if if we have time, uh, in the first next week, if I have time, I will show you. It's just a very simple concept. Okay, so so uh, that is how to use three sets. So you know how to do that now, right? All right. So now that we have our data split, what's the next next step? Let's be fast. Next step. We need to scale the data. We scale. scale the data. So what what function? Any standard scaler from SKLN dot we processing. Okay, so from uh, uh, in the next two questions I will ask now, could do don't talk. Let someone else talk. <coughs> from SKLN pre-processing imports, we have the so let's use the mean mass scalar instead of the standard scalar that could do says you can use standard scalar too. I told you what standard scalar is doing. Can someone remind me? Yes, yeah, standard scalar um, scales it between zero and one. Yes, the next I, question, Dimeji, don't answer. Uh, the, uh, could you answer? I want someone else. Okay, so I have, so create an instance of the mean mass scalar. Let's call it scalar equals to mean, mean, oh, sorry, mean mass scalar. So what do we do next? I want someone, uh, how do I use it to scale my training and testing? Yes? Uh, for, for training, we mm -hmm. use um, X transform. Good, so I would do X train, let's call this X train scaled. So you pass in the scalar and do feed transform. And then we'll pass in our, let's pass in the X train var. Because I don't want to use the X-train. No. If I want to, I'm supposed to use the X-train. But I said I only put this to show you, OK? In your own case, it should be X-train, not X-train var. Because you are using three sets. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, yes, so sir. this will be X. Let's call this X test, var, X test scaled. So I will do scalar dot what? Is it fit transform? Transform. 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 And then we'll pass in the X uh, S test. Okay, that's all. So once we do this, what's the next step? Next step, please. Someone else. Idris. Is it there? Okay. The next step is to Build a, uh, build a model. Build the model, God bless you. Build the model. I just like Idris, he hasn't been concerned, but I think he's watching the video. Yes, Dimeji, your question. Yes, sir. I have seen some people, the scale also the, the, the target, so. You, sh you shouldn't do that. Okay. Okay? Yes, sir, thank you, sir. So that may work for you for regression, what if you are dealing with classification problem where the target will be in, in categories like one, two? What if you don't know? What if you are you 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 scale that one? Then you your model you won't even it, you just be getting an error. You get so the best thing yeah, I understand. Scale it. You can actually scale it in statistics. You can you can transform both the dependent variable and independent. You know the dependent is the target. However, yes, you should also understand that that's for regression. Most models they build in, in, in statistics is, are they not just regression? They're just regression. Those of you in statistics, all you were taught uh, <laughs> linear regression, multiple regression. I know you were taught some non-parametric tests, all those we call some, but the, the, who, who use them to build model? <laughs> so, but there are equivalent of non-parametric that you can investigate. You can go and investigate decision tree random for it. Those are non-parametric models. But I won't go into the statistics more because I'm not teaching statistics. Okay, so build the model like Idris has said. So uh, we're gonna build ridge regression. But before that, let's just build last uh, um, linear regression and then 
See why Ridge and Lasso we give exactly same result for this data for the for uh, as as accuracy. So let's let's use linear regression. So um, add, where do we get linear regression from? Anybody can talk now. From SKLN linear model. From the linear model module. SKLN. You can see now that you are not memorizing. You now know it. That is it. From SKLN linear model import linear regression. So create an instance of it. Let me use LR. You can use any variable name. Linear regression. Okay. And then We'll, be, we'll fit it. We'll, we'll build the model use calling dot fit, lr dot fit. You guys will soon start to teach me now because you are you are now you are now a data scientist. I mean, my my goal is for you to be better than me. <laughs> so this line alone, we fit, we train the model. Oops. What happened? He said, found input variables with inconsistent. Oh, sorry, I put X train, X train scale. It should be X train. Oh, that's it. So this should be, let me see. Oh, sorry, it should be Y train var. You can see. So I, I, I began to use this Y train var. You can see it works now. Okay, so the model is built. So check the accuracy of the performance. Let's quickly do that. Let me format it. So uh, um, let's call this train, train accuracy or training accuracy, whichever one. Um, let me use to, to four decimal place. Uh, Henry, am I too fast? Does this thing make sense to you? Henry, I'm playing I small, small. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's no problem. Yeah, I'll watch it on YouTube. You yeah, upload it right. Yeah. Have you been watching the previous ones? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will. So let me copy this line. Yeah. You can email me just like you said, and then we'll talk. Okay. Yes, sir. Image, I'll take your question. I'm coming. I'm trying to be. Yeah, the image, your question. You said you want to show us another metric of um, measuring the performance. Of yeah, the if we get to if we get to logistic regression, you look at it. See, that's what you have underneath. Confusion matrix recall precision. You get. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. So let's run this. I think everything is fine. Okay. So this is this was what you got. You can see. I also got the same thing. Now, but linear regression doesn't have. So this doesn't need regularization. Why? The test accuracy is. They are both doing well, and the test accuracy is higher a little bit than the training. So this means this model generalizes well. That means about 92% of the time, this model will correctly predict the housing price for a new data similar to the one used to build it. That, yeah, do you understand? So that it hasn't seen before. That's what this means. About 92% will correctly predict the price for similar data, okay? But so, but for the sake of experimenting, for the sake of the time your model will overfit for linear regression, let us, let me uh, uh, implement Ridge and Lasso. But I'm sure they will find it difficult to drop any values, any, any, any variable, because it seems all, these, all the variables in this data, they are very, very meaningful average area income, average area house, average house age, like the average age of the house, how old the house should be. These are meaningful variables. So I do not expect Ridge to drop any of them or to move them close to zero or lasso dropping any of them. Do you agree with me? For this particular data, all these yes, sir. they are very meaningful. 
So let's, but let's see, let's see their own judgment. So to, to implement reach, let's put something here called reach. So we do from, see, I told you that they are linear model too. So from SKLearn linear model import reach. Let me import lasso two. Okay, create an instance of the reach. So the same thing, let's just fit it. So reach dot fit, and then we'll pass in the X train scaled, and then the Y train var. So the train has to, it has one error there. Yes, thank you. So le let me copy this guy. So I will just change this from LR now to be the reach. Okay, so I think we are good. Let's see, let's see the judgment of reach. What do you observe? Similar, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, it only increased by, by like 0 0.001. That's just the increment. So, but it, because you find it difficult to set any coefficient to zero. Remember I told you that this region lasso, they, they don't just set any variables there. They set little impact variables. That's what I showed you in the PowerPoint. They set them to zero. But all of these variables are not, they are, they are, they are actually meaningful. They, are, they have impact on the model. So reach we find it difficult. Let's say lasso that is even more harsh. Let's see, lasso judgments. Shehun, is it making sense to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Shehun is a senior, he's a data scientist. So. so. <laughs> So I need to I need to ask him if it makes sense. Okay, so let's train this like also fit. We pass in the same thing x train scaled, and then y train y train val, and then we adjust this also to lasso. You can see, lasso two, same thing. If you want to know how many how many variables lasso use, or each of them, you know you can actually get the coefficients. Even from linear regression, we can get those coefficients, those Ws. Yes, you can get it. I forgot to show you. So if you put that and press tab, you can see the first thing that shows is coef underscore. That stands for the coefficient. If I run it. These are the coefficients the model came up with for each variables, for each of the variables. These are the uh, coefficient it came for. It came up with. So if we check the coefficient for uh, ridge, let's see if they are similar to that of the lasso. Remember, normally if it's actually regularized, it's supposed to shrink the coefficient close to what? Zero. Close to zero, but let's see now. Uh, someone is trying to, okay, Bimeji. Okay, so uh, let's press tab. Okay. Now compare this and this, this, this coefficient and this guy. Are they similar? Look at them, they are even far from zeros and they are similar to that of the linear regression. They are not exactly, but they are similar. Do you, can you see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's because reach, reach, uh, find it difficult to regularize it. Suppose you want to regularize it. There is a parameter called alpha. The alpha parameter is the regularization parameter. That's what regularizes the model. The higher the values of alpha, the more regularization you are applying to the model. If you can look at the function, the distance function I was talking about, the L2, you can see linearly square with L2 regularization. The L2 is the norm 
I was talking about, and this is the formula for it. You don't need to know about it, but the main thing that does the regularization is this alpha variable. You can see. So alpha there is the regularization constant or parameter that does it. The, the higher these values of alpha, the more the regularization you are applying on the model, meaning the more you are trying to shrink those coefficients. The smaller it is, the lesser the regularization you are applying. If you read about it, we tell you, you can see it tells the regularization strength must be positive float. Regularization improves the conditioning of the problem and reduces the variance of the estimate. Larger value specifies stronger regularization, you can see. So you can read more about it and all of that. So it's a way of penalizing the model for, for large, uh, uh, for, for the complexity. Mr. Dimeji. Sorry, sir. My worksheet went down before. I didn't get the explanation of the coefficient. There's, there's no explanation. I just said if you want to see the coefficient, put dot and press that. You see the coef. The, those Ws are the coefficient now. So if you want to get the coefficient the model comes up with, just put uh, the model, the instance of the model R in our case, dot coef underscore. It will show you the coefficient the model came up with. That's all. And you can do that for the ridge too, which they are very similar. If you look at the ridge and the linear one, they are very similar. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, the same thing with the lasso. We can also come up. You can also see the QF. You can see they are still very similar. So they are even more similar to the linear regression. You can see 6443, where this one is 9909. Lasso is also giving 6443. Three, six. And that's why the, the prediction of Lasso was a, almost exactly the same thing as the linear, uh, linear regression, the same thing. So that's just, the, so that's the coefficient. So any question on the region Lasso, is it clear to us? Do we know how to implement it? So I was trying to use that Lasso now. Okay. To implement the Lasso and it's bringing up a kind of dialogue box saying frozen, Import lib bootstrap. Frozen what? Frozen import lib bootstrap. Say runtime non buying u function size change may indicate binary incompatibility. So, do you mean you are trying to implement this particular cell? Yes. Or which one? Okay, 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 okay. No worries, sir. Don't worry. Sir. Maybe you didn't put the score. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that's that. Any question on the lasso, ridge, and all of that? Any question? Are we clear? No, it's very clear, sir. Okay, I know the time is uh, is fast spent, uh, but let me quickly talk about this um, logistic. It's very similar to. Um, I mean, is 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 similar concept, just the model. So, one thing you should pay attention to is that the even though logistic has the name regression, it is not a regression model. It is not a regression model. It's a classification model. Do you understand what I mean by classification model? Yes, mm -hmm. Good. Remember I told you that supervised learning is divided into two. What are they? What are they? Regression and classification. Regression and classification. So we've, we've dealt with regression. Now, remember classification goal is to predict categories of a target. Like you want to build a model to detect whether fraud has occurred or not. Or whether a patient has cancer or not. So, so things like that. That's classification. That's the, the goal. That's classification. So you can use logistic regression. So logistic regression is not a regression model. So don't use it for regression. If you do it, we give you error. So it's a classification 
uh, model. So one of the things you need to know is which models, if I want to do regression, what are the models I can use? If I want to do class, uh, classification problem, if I want to solve it, what are the models? One of the model is logistic regression. You can investigate others like decision tree, random forest, gradient boosting, neural networks for deep learning. You can, you can investigate them or you can leave them for future when you will need it. That's it, but it's beyond the scope of this scholarship uh, course, okay? And by the way, we're gonna start, we're starting a new batch of scholarship people. Once we, in case, if you know people, students, you are not eligible to take it again. If you know students who are serious and need it, by the time we drop it out, please, you can refer them, let them take it, yeah, it's free. Remember, we're trying to, to impact the society. So you can invite as many, as many and as many of your people who are interested, but who are really, really serious, because if they are not, you'll be dropped. Okay, just by the way. Uh, Dimeji, if your question is about the batch, leave that to the end. Let me talk about logistic regression. Otherwise, you can ask. Okay, good. No, it's about it, so I've dropped my hand. Yeah, so we'll talk, before we, we, drop, we, we end the class, you can ask. Okay, so logistic regression, you can see it's the same formula as that of the linear regression, except that there is a condition here greater than zero, meaning this zero is like a threshold that you are setting. You are, so the way it is category, meaning if you set a particular threshold, in statistics, the threshold is like 0 0.5. So if the model predicts, so this model is predicting probabilities. It can predict probabilities, it can predict target value. So if it's probability, that means we are setting a threshold, maybe like 0 0.5. So once the model predicts pro, uh, probability of zero, anything below 0 0.5, that would be that the model is predicting a particular category. If it's predicting anything above 0 0.5 threshold, suppose the threshold is 0 0.5, that means it's predicting the second category. So the idea is the same that the coefficient, the variables, the axes, the same thing, except that the model is predicting categories or it can predict probabilities. That's the main thing. It's a linear model, so but it's a classification model. It's used to predict categories because it's a classification model. It all the it inherits all of the all of the importance of linear model, like is is they are very powerful on very high dimensional data. You know, you, you also need to scale it all of the same thing. However, it helps you to predict categories, mainly two. Though you can use it for more, to predict multiple categories, but the, 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 the base form of it is to predict two categories, cancer or not cancer, fraud, no fraud, things like that. So it's going to be helping us to predict categories. The major your question. Sorry, sir. All the regression models that we've been talking about, we've been classifying them as linear. Are there others that are non-linear? The regression? Yes, we've been saying linear models, like from, we've been using the linear model class, like we've so, been- Unfortunately, like, all those, uh, all these other uh, logistic regressions are say linear model, but for the non-linear, I've mentioned them. I mentioned decision tree. Check oh, okay. cyclelearn.tree. You have decision okay. tree there. Check cyclelearn.assemble. You have random forest, you have gradient boosting, you have bagging, you have, you have too many. So all those ones, they are non-linear. Okay, so that means logistic regression is the only linear for classification regression. God bless you. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So even though decision tree, all those ones, they have regression aspect too. They have decision tree regressor, decision tree classifier. So meaning there is an aspect of those ones too that can be used for regression. They have. In case your data is not is non-linear, because the assumption of this linear model is that is okay. Look at your visualization that you did when you did SNS.reg plot. You know, you are trying to put a line through that point that you plot. What you are assuming is that there is a linear relationship between the two variables. 
That's why the line you are putting to it work. But suppose the two variables, the variables, the dependent variables, the target and the independent, all these features, there is no linear relationship between them. You will not be able to put that line through it. It won't really make sense. It's like a curve, things like that. So that's what we call nonlinear data, data showing nonlinear relationship. So in that case, regression will perform worse. And that's why you can try other models, even for regression, like decision tree regressor, random forest regressor, things like that. K nearest neighbor regressor. K nearest neighbor is also a classification, but can be used for regression too. Go and investigate there, okay? All right. Am I good to go? Yes, sir. All right, let's see how to implement it. We've talked of regularization. So now, logistic regression has a regularization term. You know, regression doesn't have, that's why we use lasso and read. Logistic regression actually has a regularization term. Just like what the regularization term in parameter in lasso and read that I showed you now. Alpha. Alpha, God bless you. In logistic, it is C, value C but it works in opposite direction to alpha. You know that alpha, I said the higher the value of alpha, the more the regularization in reach and lasso. But in logistic, the smaller the values of C, the more the regularization you are applying. Remember, you only use regularization if the model overfit. By default, this C com comes with a value of one. So that's like a, a center point where it will not really regularize and it will, it's not also not regularizing. But if you want it to really regularize, we can set, we can even run a for loop. You have been taught for loop. We can run, we can set different values of C and run, run a for loop for our model. So, you know, run a for loop for our model, setting the C to different values. Do, do I make that? I don't know if that makes sense. If that ring something in your brain. Running, yes, yeah, oh, you, you can try it, but I, I can show you an example next class. Share your right. question. Yes, sir. Uh, you said regularization um, for last word, which is alpha. Yes. You didn't use it in the bridge or last word. Is there any reason why you use it? Because the model didn't overfit, but I showed you. So the model, remember this model didn't overfit. I showed you. If this model overfit, that's when you want to run. You know, all the alpha, the ridge and lasso, we, I only showed you in case your model overfit. And I said there is a regularization parameter called alpha. So the higher the value of alpha, the more regularization. But when do you regularize if the model overfit? So if the model does not overfit, there's no point. Do you get? Because in setting the re, increasing this alpha means uh, reduce the complexity. That that will lower the training accuracy. You so you also don't want the accuracy of the training to be low. It's just that there is more focus on the test accuracy. So if your model overfit, you can run a for loop in, uh, to set different values of alpha like. You can set alpha. This was what I was saying for that C. Set different values of alpha. Maybe since I know more, the default is one, I can use one, I can use five, I can use 10, I can use 15, I can use 20. Then I'll run a for loop that, okay, for maybe uh, for alpha, you know, something like this, for alpha of, yeah, alpha in, my alpha there, whatever, or I can turn this guy to alpha value so that you can. Then I do for alpha in alpha values. You know, simple, put all of this guy under this loop so that my ridge will now be ridge. But this time around, I will set my alpha parameter that is inside to this alpha that I'm picking. That's all. Then I will do the fit and all of this fit. This guy fit. I'll put it under here, under this. That's all. So this that way I can if then I can 
have something like train accuracy as an empty list, test accuracy as an empty list, so that as I as I do this guy, uh, as I do this guy, I will get the score. Just do my train. So show uh, the major. I don't need to show you again. I'm showing you here. I will just do append the training accuracy of my uh, of of this guy. Reach the score of my X train scaled or whatever is called. Y train. I will just append it to read, and then my test accuracy to do the same thing, append, and do my read. Oh, I'm trying to be fast because the time is fast. Then X test scaled. So and at the end, I can use Matplotlib to visualize this training accuracy and test on the same plot. I can do that. I believe you should be able to do that one. Just call plt.plot of training accuracy, set the label, maybe train, blah, blah. The next line, plt.plot, passing test accuracy and all of that. Or you still want me to show all of that too? No, just one question, sir. Yeah. Are we, which one is against which? Is it the train accuracy against the test? You want to visualize, no, 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 no. You are visualize, you are going to plot this on the X axis, the alpha values. This will be the Y value, something like oh. this. Oh. Okay, I understand now. Uh -huh, okay, so I don't need to show you, right? Do you all understand? No, sir, no, sir. The, X, the X axis will be the um, different values of alpha, exactly. Y, the the y values will be this and this, but on a different, you are plotting these two on a different line. So once you put it here to the plot of this, of the alpha values, comma, and training accuracy, comma, set the label. The label can be, so this is what I'm saying. Let me just do it. Import math plot leave. In the pie plot as plt. Then you do plt dot plot. We plot the alpha values. I'm plotting it against the train accuracy. Then I want to set my label to train. So that will be used as the legend. So I can do copy this guy. But this time around is now the test accuracy. Then you can set the legend, PLT dot legend. Yeah. If I even want to set the location, I can do location to the best, but that one is optional. PLT dot show. Uh, maybe let's see. I, I, it must, I must have put something, it's extreme val. I'm always making this mistake. You can see something like this. So for the different values of alpha, you can see that the training accuracy was better for all of the, the test accuracy, the train, I mean. Oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't this is supposed to be test. So the, the test accuracy was better for all. So you can see that there's no point really regularizing, but if it does, so this, will, why are you doing this? This will help you to, see, to select the, the best values of C, of alpha, I mean, like if I want to select now, you can see it's still the highest value of C that give the best accuracy for training and test, is still around that one thereof, if you see. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's the so, and that's the default. So you can see now that there's no need actually to 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 regularize. I don't know if if what we have done makes sense to you guys. If yes, it does. It makes sense. Okay. Do we all understand? I hope I'm not too fast, Idris. I hope you understand. Yes, you understand, sir. Oh, okay. Good. So the back to the logistic regression. So let's let's uh, 
So I said the regularization time for the uh, logistic is C, and it works in opposite way to the alpha, meaning the smaller the values of alpha uh, C, the more the regularization. So let's quickly use, I'll use a built-in data here um, called the cancer data and is in psychic length. So uh, from, so the, I'll just use a built-in data. In your case, you already know how to get in, in data. Uh, you already know how to load the data, get the features and the targets. So from psychic length data sets, there are some data there that you can use for practice. One is the load uh, cancer, uh, data, the load, uh, let me see, is it, I think load breast cancer, there about, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's a classification data. So you can, you can visualize what is there, let's load it. Let me save it as cancer, load uh, breast cancer. Let me, let me do cancer.keys to see what and what are stored there. So, the, so this is how the person who created the psyche, this is how he stores all the data that he puts there. All the data are stored here. So what is it in this data are just the features. Remember when we brought in our data, we had to manually select the features, either by dropping the target variable or by selecting just the variables that we need. Do you remember that? So, yes. but here, it has been separated. All the built-in data inside PsycheLearn, all the features are separated into what we call the data. The target is the one carrying the, the Y, the target. The, the target names, the names of the target, those categories. This is the variable names. We can actually use it, create a data frame out of it. We can. So, to, so if, for instance, if I want to see the variable names, I'll just do my cancer dot feature, feature names. You can see it gives me all of the variable names. These are all the variable names. If I do target names, it will give me the categories there. So I have two categories, malignant and benign. So you want to build a model to predict whether the cancer a patient is carrying is malignant, meaning it's very harmful at the very, very, dangerous stage or is still at the very uh, uh, beginning stage. My benign is still, is not too harmful at this point. It can still be uh, addressed, things like that. So that's the, those are the two levels there. You can create a data frame for me using pd.data frame. I believe I already taught you this. If I do, I don't need to, but just for experiment sake, I can do pd.data frame. I use PF, ED dot, data frame. I can pass in, if you look at this, the data. So I can pass in the data to be the cancer data. And then it also has the columns argument, columns. So I can pass in the columns to be the cancer, the feature name that I just showed you. So if I do this, if you check the first five, remember how to check the first five is dot F. This we create, this we turn into a data frame, you can see. So this is the data frame. I know I'm, too, I'm teaching too fast at this point, but I hope you understand what I'm doing. Yes, we're getting it, sir. Okay, so, but you don't need it. We don't, if the goal is to build model, I don't need to convert to a data frame, but since you are going to be visualizing, uh, exploring, you might actually need to convert to a data frame. And that's why I did this one now. Okay, but suppose I just want to build model. I'm okay, I already know where the features are and the targets. So all I will just do is I'll select the features. So I'll just select the features. I'll do my cancer, the data, that's the features. And my target is the cancer, the target. So they are, I don't need to do the value because they are already in NumPy array. How do you know? Uh, check cancer the data. You can see they're already in an array form. So that's why I'm, I told you that the person, the person has already selected the features for you 
put them in a separate place. So you don't need to do dot values. But if you are working with the data frame, if you are using the data frame, then you might need to use the dot values. Okay? Then split it using the train test split from psyche learn um, model selection. I'm always spelling the from. <laughs> so, okay, from psyche learn model selection, import the train test split. So, split it. I'm going to use two sets because it's a very small data. And I already show you. Uh, why train? Well, there's no way we're going to spend a few minutes above the normal time. I hope it's fine by you guys. No problem, sir. Okay, okay. okay train test split. Okay, so we're passing the features, we're passing the targets, we're passing the random states. Okay. So that's that that actually do that. We can, if you like, you can check the dimension, explain the shape, blah blah, and all of that. So let's scale it. If you don't scale it, it will work, but logistic regression might give you some warning. So, but it's always good. Don't wait for the warning. It's always good to scale. Okay, except if you are doing building tree-based model like decision tree. But there's no point talking about it since I'm not going to teach it. So. I leave that for you as assignment. Scale the data. <laughs> okay, so remind me the function. From um, preprocessing. Preprocessing, import. Let's import, use the standard, uh, scalar. standard scalar. Okay, let's use the scalar. You can see the process is almost the same, it's, it's always the same thing. The main thing is data preparation, getting up to this point. Is always a difficult task. In the real world, 80% of your time will be preparing, cleaning, doing all of that to get to this point. Maybe I should change the project self and give you a very dirty data and see maybe how you are going to do all the cleaning, right? Do you want that? But if you do that, sir, then we, because we need to understand the data, sir. <laughs> no, Before no, no. We... I will leave you to make some decision on your own. And I will agree with your decision as far as you are able to explain your intuition behind the decision you take. Okay, sir. But I will ask the rest. I went. All, I want everybody to to agree with that first. Okay, extra or you just go with clean data, but it's just that in the real world you will not have clean data. That's all. <laughs> so whichever one, your choice. Me, I prefer that you give us the dirty data. Okay, that's your own choice. You I prefer a dirty data, sir. You prefer clean, Abi? A dirty data, sir. Okay. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we do transform. Okay, expert. So I will drop that today. Just yeah. Okay, so um, I think everything is fine. Then we can. So we can get our model now from scikit learn um, linear model. Let's import logistic, logistic regression. You can see the same thing. Once you know where the model is in your scikit learn, you are, you are good. So um, um, I'm getting tired, sorry. <laughs> oh, Greg, okay. Logistic regression. Let me use the default parameter. So we do log reg dot feed, and I pass in the x train scale, y train. So let me copy all of this thing. I'm I'm getting I'm getting tired to type and all of that. Let me copy this guy. Are we on the same page? Yes, sir. yes, sir. We are on the same page. Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So I will just change this guy to log red. So let me run this wrong, then. Sir. What? Is wrong, sir. Is oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Log red. Thank you, Darren. 
Uh, what is um, this? Mr. D. White Train. White Train Bar. Why? White Train Bar. I always forget. Why? Okay. Why? Why? I didn't hear you, Jerry. Say it. Actually, using white thing, not straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be white. It should be white train, not not white train. Yes. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah. I run in that. So it should be white train. Okay, okay. It's from here. Thank you, Jerry. But what's it going on? S train scaled. Yep. So where is the problem coming from? On label continuous. Let me see. Uh, let me see my white train first. Oh, this is where the problem is coming from. So he didn't record, didn't I run this guy? You can see what I'm saying that you cannot use logistic for regression. That's exactly what. So I think because I'm using the same name, I is is um, is picking the white train I've used before. So now it should work fine. X train, and um, so let's let's run this now. Yeah. So do you get now? So that's you have to. Anyway, it's, it's just. Yeah, you, you can't use logistic for continuous value. Okay, so you can see this is it. But from here, you know that we can say this over feet, right? Because yes, this is about 99%, this is 95. Although for this data, the data is very small. If you check your cancer data dot shape, it is it's just 569 rows and we already split it. So, but to have this kind of accuracy set on this small data, that shows the model is a very good one. Dimeji, your question. Okay, so at what percentage difference can we actually see the model over fits? So the, the, the truth is that there is no particular percent. However, if there is a, if, if they are approximately the same, that's still good. That means the model generalizes well. But once they are not approximately the same, especially like this, I mean, you just have to, I mean, I think it's the more you are building this model, the better you will just come to know that, oh, this over fee. Because you want to, as much as possible, get a reliable model. And if you are ignoring overfitting, you are paying attention to just the training and just, oh, it's high the model will not be reliable. So especially when the training is almost perfect and it's not perfect on the, you know, 100% means it's perfect. So once the training is almost a perfect model on the training data, you should know it's overfitting. And if you don't have perfect on the test, that should be overfitting. If this is about 90, 96, I can still go with it. If this, the training is about 90, I can still say, oh, it's, it's fine. So do you understand what I'm trying to say? I know I didn't give you a concrete answer, but that's the truth. It will be hard if anybody tells me that there is one constant truth that once it's this, then I will tell you you are, you are actually telling lies because there is no rule that says that. But you are the one that you have to just, you know what you want based on the problem you are trying to solve. So that, that's just it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you may want to now regularize it. But regularizing is actually building another model. So you can try the same thing, what we did here, something like this. Uh, I'm looking at the visualization. So something like this. You can do, but we'll now do it for alpha, for C. We can do something like this. Let me, let me steal this code and do something like this. So, but instead of alpha, but I like can put C, you know, and then I will, I will change those values to C, C, and then this one will do with the logistic, 
This is log reg. Yeah. Maybe I save it as log reg once so as to keep the original model. Because most times you are building different model and you want to compare the, the model when you did not um, regularize to when you now regularize. So it's good to give it a new name. And you know. I will see post to see. Yes, yes, I will. Thank you, Gary. See post see. Also, why do you vow? Yes, yes. You guys are you guys are now good. Okay, so we can change this value. Remember, the smaller the values of C, the default is one actually. So we want to do something like maybe 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.1, 0. Point, or we could even do 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. Zero point eight. The one is the one we did before, maybe one point zero or just one. So we can try this. Let's see, everything is fine. Not yet, sir. What's that? Um, What's left? The, the, the one dot fit. We still have the white ring valve instead of white ring. Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank you so much. You guys are now professors now. You are teaching me now. That's great. Oh, you did which what size we didn't catch? We didn't catch this value though. You see, yeah. We didn't catch it. Okay, what else? Are we good? Okay, good. Look at it. This model overfit almost all the for all the different values. But the highest, the highest of um the, the highest value for the training, the test is even at this 0 0.5. And that's, so So it's, you can see that's about 90, over 97%. So that's this 0 0.5. So if I pick it, even though this model overfit, though, you know, the, you know, I gave you two options. Is it that you regularize or you get more data? So this could mean that the data is too small. If you like regularize more, the data is too small, you need more data. Do you understand? So, yes, that, so, but still, this this tells us that using the values of C, we, we give us a, a better one on the test. So what since I've done this, I will now rebuild the model using values of C. So I'll just redo this guy now. That's why you are, you are visualizing actually, is to know the actual values of the parameter to do, okay? So all this thing I did here, data scientists call it hyperparameter tuning. So in case you hear that term, know that you have had it somewhere. <laughs> so it's just, you are trying to tune it. So now we're going to set our C to 0 0.5. So let's see, call it log reg one, because that's still the model we built up there. So I think we are fine on this. So you can see now, you can see that it was better than the previous one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. It yes, makes sir. sense. Exactly. So we have we were able to reduce the training accuracy and then increase the test accuracy. So this slightly overfits, slightly. For this kind of data, I mean, this is a very good model because the data is small. Still, we were able to even approximately get 98% on the on the test. So this does not really overfit does not really overfit. If you are going to say it overfit, that means you are coming up with a very high standard. That means this model slightly overfit. So this model will still do a good job on new data. Any question? I know I've said a lot of things, but I hope you guys are beginning to understand this concept. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So all this is what you are going to do for me in your project. Now, one final thing I will not teach, which I will challenge you to do. After you have done all of this experiment, to, pre, to give me a very, you can show me all of this stuff, all of these steps and all of that. But I want, after you've done this, 
the final code you are showing, you are giving out to me. And you are free to give two notebook if you like. Wrap all of these steps inside a function. So that one will give you a production level code, code that can be deployed into production in the industry. Meaning define, maybe you, you come up to make it clear, clearer, this is what I'm saying. Um, and I think I didn't teach, uh, I will teach this metrics next week by God's grace. Like define a function called pre-processing, maybe to pre-process the data, pre-process data. This, this, pro, this function should take in maybe the URL to the data and the final product of this function should be maybe the features, select the features and the target. So what should be, what are the process, the things that you want have done under this function? Uh, under this function, you want to clean the data, you want to um, split, you, okay, you're not even splitting. So you are just cleaning the data. So you can also convert categorical, like the get dummies I taught you, convert categorical or that I showed you, categorical variables into numeric. That's all. So, and then, so this is what you will return. So, and then you define another function. I mean, am I making sense to you? Dimej, I'll take your question, but is it, do you have an idea of what I'm saying? Kudus, do you understand? Yes, I understand, sir. Okay, Dimej, your question. Yeah, hey, I understand everything you said, no. but um, this um, equal to and greater than that. No, 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 I'm just, in, this just, in, I'm giving you, this, oh, okay, is, okay. this is not code now, I'm just, I'm giving you the what the output of your function. No, no. Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So another function that would take these features and target, and maybe we call this data preparation. Preparation. So this function takes in the features and the target, and then it gives the output of this. This function, uh, the output should be the the X train, the three sets, the training, the validation, the S, the test. You get so what should be underneath? Split. You can see the same thing we have done. Split the data, scale it scale the data and then return the scaled one for me. And the final function should be the modeling. So this way, your code will be neat and you can deploy this to your GTOP. Am I making sense? Yes, this, last, we, this last <laughs> function should take in, okay, and the Y train too, the Y, Y train, Y var, Y test. So you can, but I want to, so this function, don't let me take in this. So this function should just, inside this function, collect the, the result of this, call it inside this function, call this particular function inside the modeling and pass this and use this data inside the modeling. So this, this has the, uh, this has the, the results of, of data preparation. Then the next thing, uh, so this, this modeling should be able to take any model. So you can now go and investigate other models like decision tree is your own, is your due, is your choice, but you can give me only logistic or you can use others, decision tree, if you are able to investigate them, fine. But this function should be able to take any model and then um, uh, um, this should be able to take any model and the result should be the, the training accuracy 
and the validation accuracy. Remember, don't to do all this tuning on the test like I did there. This is a bad way. Instead, it should be validation. That's why I'm saying you are using three sets. You are using just three sets. It's when you are finally done, you will touch the test set and you only touch it once and only once. So if you don't remember that. So this is taking the model, this we train it, this will fit the model, any model, and then give me the training and validation accuracy. You can, on your own, define a utility function, like a function for uh, tuning. Tuning. This function takes in the this, this particular model, whatever model, I don't know, any model that you want to that you are building and then it, it does all the tuning, tuning the parameter, all of this kind. Yeah. But that one is optional. Optional. Is it a lot? Not exactly, sir. I have a question, sir. Your, your question and then we'll wrap up uh, this class. Oh, okay, so what I want to ask is, should must we do this in a Jupyter notebook, like can I use PyCharm? Yeah, free, sir. So do PyCharm. Okay. But you know, PyCharm, your your extension is dot .py. So yes, I know. Yeah, that means you are sending the Python, the dot .py to me. But why, why, why exactly does it make any difference? No, I'm just asking, sir. I the know reason that... is because if you use PyCharm, remember that the way this PyCharm works, except you are you have an idea of command line argument. Otherwise, you will be you will have to every time you run one, you are running everything at the same time. Do you know? Yeah, yes, sir. So that's the disadvantage. Except you have you can run your Python on the command line. Say we go around on the command line. Do you know how to do that? No, no, so no, sir. But use, use use the notebook then. Okay, sir. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Uh, mm, can we put all these functions inside a particular function? Right. That's what I'm saying. You you may choose not to receive this target and just call this function maybe as the first line and assign it to features and targets. Since you know this function will return these features and targets, call this function inside the data preparation and assign the result of features and targets. Call this function. It says, you know, this will return this guy. Recall it inside this, inside the modeling. So calling the data pressure inside this, we call the pre-process. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. So if, if that's your way, you can do it. But there is no, you guys have choice of how to go about it, but you can do that. Mm -hmm. That's what we call a pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I understand, yeah. sir. Yeah. Any other question? We are getting to where you guys start real work now. That's why I need to start teaching you all, show you this. Because if you're able to do this, then you can take a job in this field at, that, at this point. Yeah. Vera, are you clear? Idris, are you yes, clear? Okay, good. Shell. Shell yes, no, okay. Yes, okay. So that this is the so this is where we're gonna stop. So fine. Yes, uh Dimitri, you want to ask a question on the batch? I said we are we are starting yeah, this yeah. batch. Mm -hmm. Yes, my question is that the applicants must they have a programming knowledge. Do you have a program knowledge when will you start this? Yes, I did, yes. You did, right? I didn't get you. Yes, I I have already been coding in Python before, but I don't know if there's anyone here presently that didn't have um, um programming knowledge before we started. The way you were taught, did they assume that you have programming uh, knowledge? No, 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 sir. And so that's it. Oh, okay, so sorry. we don't assume that in our training. Uh, and I mean, I don't know if Vera has a programming knowledge before, but we didn't assume that that's the truth. So 
if you follow through from the very first class, follow by practicing and all of that, even if you have zero knowledge, but you have zeal, you have the zeal, the interest to put in the time. There's nothing big deal into it. Yeah. We've taught people by God's grace, God has helped us to, to teach people from zero knowledge within six weeks and they got a job even in the US. So <laughs> if that's it, so you don't need, they don't need to. And that's why you see that in the in the advert you two saw, there was something called no programming experience is required, if you remember. In all our banner, except the data science master class that we teach every other thing, both the full stack development, all every, every of our courses, no programming knowledge is required. So that is it. But seriousness is required. You can see, actually it was 50 people that we gave admission to, like for this scholarship. But how many are you today? <laughs> you are five. If you are, if you are even up to five, say. Uh -huh. Okay, you are five, you can see. So that is it. So, but this time, so that is just it. Uh, and that's why we are removing people as they are known, we are removing them because there's no point giving you, the, you don't give dogs what belongs to the children. That's how the Bible put it. So you don't put, give people quality things when they will trample it on the food, by under the food. So that's just it. And uh, you, they, we don't blame anybody for, not taking it serious. You may have your own reason, and there may be one million reasons why you should not be serious <laughs> with it, depending on what you want. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Thanks. Yep. So that's just it. But um, so what we are going to do, if you are, if truly you have benefited from what we've done, from what we have done so far. You've really, if you truly you've gained a lot, uh, will it be too much for the organization to ask you for a short testimony? No, no, it will be fine. I hope you will all be, will be you all, be, if you are benefited, you all be willing to give it, right? Yes, we'll be glad to do that. Yes, sir. All right. Okay, because we're going to ask you. Yeah. It's just it's a testimony since you have gone through it because we are rounding up. We are going to start SQL next week and um, you, have, you should install my SQL before next week class, my SQL. So I will send the link to you. I will see, but you can also Google it, but I will send the link. You install it. So we'll, try, we'll do some uh, SQL and then by at, at most two weeks time, we should wrap up, we should wrap, we should round up the, but before doing it, you are going to be, be you are going to be uh, presenting your project next week and the upper week, like you are going to be for the remaining few weeks, whether two weeks or three more weeks, but it can be more than three weeks, but at most three weeks, but well, two weeks time at most, or two or three weeks, you should be done. But each of the week you are going to present your project in, about five minutes. Okay, starting from next week. So I'm going to drop the project today. All right? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. All right. So at this point, I 